Well, 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 welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely Westlake Village, California. Thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to get all the updates. I'm going to be going over Bitcoin, some of the inflation numbers, which came out hotter than expected. Uh, back to the Kobisi letter here, it says, while CPI inflation is at 3.1%, inflation is much higher on many basic necessities, car insurance 20%, transportation 9.5%, hospital services 6.7%, car repair 65 homeowner inflation 6.2%. I know uh, people are enjoying some of the higher home prices. Rent inflation, 6.1%, and food away from home inflation. That one I definitely could say is probably higher than that. So both core CPI and headline CPI came in hotter than expected. And this is the second straight month with both readings being hotter than expected. And I could have told you that one um, after, uh, you know, the stock market did a party like this. And I think this is why we're getting that short-term correction in stocks. Um, why? Well, Jerome Powell said, hey, they need to see evidence of inflation going down before they uh, you know, think about cutting rates. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't think anything's stopping this train at the moment, but uh, just something to keep our eyes on as well. <clears throat> what else I saw? Good. Tweet here, uh, Bitcoin uh, from TED Talks Macro reclaimed its 2022 highs owed to firstly the speculation of the spot ETF during 2023 and now subsequent approval and hot start to ETF trading. So I think the ETF uh, just took out its high and uh, the next one to keep our eyes on is the Ethereum um, ETF, you know, that's supposed to get approved somewhere around March 23rd. Is that right? March 23rd, May 23rd, May 23rd. Uh, yeah. So what's, you know, not so important is the speculation of the approval, just like what we saw with Bitcoin. I, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, back on a Bitcoin. And I think it's time to read the, <laughs> redraw the chart a bit, uh, from we, what we had been speaking about. Over the past few weeks, uh, just, you know, really summing it up here um, with the good old Fib tool, we said, look, if um, if we close back above the 0.5 or the 618 on the daily time frame, that was our first warning that this was a bit of a, uh, well, it could have been a bear trap. Um, so the bear trap set down there, uh, the bull trap, Anyways, we are looking for a potential lower high in this region. We, in fact, did not get that. So it's good to, you know, uh, find out where you're wrong, right? And so on the other side, we said, hey, any kind of a five day closure above the middle wick, and it's pretty much bull party onto the upside target. So just uh, taking a step back here on the weekly time frame. So we did get above the 0.5 and the 618. You know, bulls are back in control. And <clears throat> I think something to take a look at is the range that we are currently back in. We're back in the, you know, what I would consider the bull range, which is uh, back above this, this mid-level retracement. Um, so looking at this as more of a upper range, I'll just try to make it a little easier here to see here. And here we go. So you kind of got these four levels and I would treat it as such. Uh, looking more on the daily time frame, I think this lines up a little better. Next major area of liquidity coming in at 52,000. But if you break it down from a Fibonacci perspective on the weekly time frame, I think that's where, where I got all these uh, pretty lines from here. You've got your mid level, your 0.5 coming in right here, the 382 sitting at 43.4 and the 236 all the way down there. And then you've got uh, the 786 coming in at about 58,000. And notice the 618 right there at uh, this little pocket right here, this little pocket from back here. So we are now back in this range. Um, just another perspective there. 
So looking at any pullbacks as a major buying opportunity and you know, we still have the possibility of the pre having dump. So maybe we hit the 618 here at 42.5 and then bring it back. And I would see any kind of a closure back below this mid level coming in at 47. You'd be kind of looking for a lower high there um, and potential reversal opportunities. And I guess that is the question right now. Um, if we are back above 48,000, should we be getting long and targeting this move up to the 786 at 58? Um, that is the question to bear in mind. The other thing that we did talk about at length is the BBWP and how to know when the next 40% move is coming. So again, defining expansion as this thing gets above 25%, you would expect the price to go in the direction of the stochastic, which is currently crossed up here. We've got another one day and six hours. So the next five day closure and we'll cross back down below 44,437. Uh, something else that I want to take a look at here is the good old Bollinger Bands, but uh, I'm gonna leave this up for one more second. We also noted that um, pre, we also noted that um, before the five day uh, flipped around, the three day, which is pretty much giving you that signal to the upside above 25%, uh, the two day and the date, excuse me, the two day is pointed up. And now the daily is just about to cross down from the critical zone, showing us that the market is uh, trending right now. Any kind of a cross above 90, typically shows more trending price action. So at the very least, you know, we look for a little bit of a consolidation here at this level. Um, also want to peek at high block capital, seeing people are net long right now. So more liquidity is going to be to the downside. Also want to just take a look at the heat map here. So the first major level of liquidations to the downside, 41,500, and then you got 38.6 and 34,000 and then to the upside here. I'm just going to refresh that slightly here. This is one month liquidity levels again, major blocks coming in at about 52,000. So if they do send it to the upside, I'd expect some sell pressure off of that pivot. And that also lines up with this guy right back here. That's coming in at uh, 41,730. So a lot of uh, liquidity hanging out there to the upside and you know, does it happen in one foul swoop? Well, if the stock market continues to correct, that would be more points in the fair in the favor of the bears. Also, Dixie also taking a leg up it does look like a bit of a um, ascending triangle breakout. And perhaps we're heading back to the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, um, you know, above the box good uh, or bad it's actually the opposite below the box is is essentially good as the dollar goes down risk assets tend to go up so just something to keep on in the back of our heads right now lastly i wanted to throw the three day bollinger bands uh up here and see um just something to note you know the last time we start and i'm glad i'm pulling this out right now the last bull run Let's see, we also got the three day histogram flipping up on the MACD. So generally bulls are you know, gonna be in control right now. Hash ribbons, you had that nice blue buy signal. Um, but more importantly, I wanted to bring our attention to uh, this area back here. When the three day time frame tends to grab onto the top side Bollinger Band, you can you know have trend continuation and you usually get one closure below and some more continuation. Maybe we could see a bit of a rally like we saw uh, in the 2020 breakout from 12,000 to 18,000. So I just want to, you know, point out that we did close above the topside Bollinger Band there. And to me, when this kind of target, yeah, that's the next level to get above. Any kind of a three day closure back above 50,000, you know, technically gives us a clean shot back up to about 69,000. So I do think it's a good time to remind ourselves what our strategy has been at a certain point, you know, Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin is hard to outperform in a macro 
you know, bull reversal up 200% off the lows. But at a certain point, um, it's time to take a look at some of the altcoins. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, but when Bitcoin dominance does take its leg down, that's typically when you're going to see the alt alts start to take off. So hopefully you've already been looking at those and have some ideas, potential entry points for yourself. I'm going to be switching back to my regular chart here. So as long as we are closing above the topside Trollinger band on Bitcoin on the three day time frame, I'm going to expect more continuation there. And that wraps up the thoughts there. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum will have a chance to have its first uh, closure back up there and uh, continuation. Continuation, we said the measure move target for Ethereum is up here at about 3,500 bucks off of that massive ascending triangle. Also good to see Ethereum taken off. Uh, bear with me just a second. Back onto the regular chart. The regular chart, the one I wanted to see here. So after a bit of a M formation, could this be the Tuesday midweek reversal where we get a nice clean shot all the way back down? What would the M look like on this 15 minute time frame? Just pointing it out here for a short term pullback. We got the low and yeah, that's is your M formation on the 15 minute time frame. So what typically happens, you know, over the weekend, you've get a range established. Uh, well, this is Ethereum, right? Uh, range established. And then you have the first move, impulsive move for the week. I guess it was down and then they sent it up. Yeah. So if you just look at this idea here, just pointing this out, if anybody does trade on Sundays, or if you're watching the market during Super Bowl, we had this range. And essentially they faked everybody out on Monday morning with a downside move and trapping all these guys that went short and threw it up to the upside. Now, you know, getting that first lower low, lower high. And uh, as long as we are essentially below this last high right here, or below the 618, you know, you could expect some pressure down for Ethereum on the shorter term time frame, but overall, expecting Ethereum to do what we've been talking about for most of the year. And that's eventually start to outperform Bitcoin. As Bitcoin dominance goes up, though, it is going to be hard for that to happen. Checking in on Tether dominance coming down on the four hour. And again, when Tether dominance goes up, typically not the best thing for altcoins was going down uh, at the moment. And same thing for Bitcoin. So I think, you know, we were looking at major buying opportunities around 35 and 30,000. And I'm just going to move up that box to um, look at some major buying opportunities as we come back down uh, the liquidity level here. So coming in at 41.6 to 42,000 and 40,000. If it is going to take a leg down, I wouldn't say it would be hard for us to get a wick somewhere down around 42,000 or this box coming in at 45. And also I will point out this is that as long as we're in a daily uptrend, you know, let the friend be your friend. Um, let the friend be your friend here. Let the trend be your friend until the end of the trend. And I'm just seeing where's a good level to anchor in a little pivot point here. To me, that doesn't even look good. And that would come all the way back from the lows over here. Even that does not give us a perfect. But essentially, just let let the trend be your friend. Any pullbacks probably going to be major buying opportunities going into this having event. And just reminding myself out loud again, you know, we've never not had, you know, a 30% pullback either right before or right after the having event. And we did talk about this as well as it could be one last liquidity grab deviation above the range high and back down. Uh, you know, you expect going back to the bottom side of the range. So do I think they're all just going to give it to us straight up to the upside? Well, maybe these capital inflows that they're talking about inflows from the ETF. Let's see if there's any news. Bitcoin ETF inflows, Bitcoin's price breaks 50,000 spot ETF. 
The total AUM of all spot Bitcoin ETFs is 33 and a half billion, says Joe. I don't know if I'm going to take that one with the grain of salt, but uh, grayscale volume. I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm going to give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto, but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto trader's dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Still having some outflows there. Needless to say, I think this video is a bit of a longer. Um, this is the next area of liquidity. This last high on the daily time frame coming in at about 52,000. Um, if, you know, again, uh, we can just expect more of the same right now. And as the ETH dominance takes a leg up, you'd expect uh, Ethereum to start to pick up. Also the ETH Bitcoin pairing. So I just getting my thoughts back together here after a bit of a holiday weekend and kids going back to school and having days off and all that stuff. So could you call this the higher low with a high volume candle on the daily like that? Yeah, uh, sure could. But now we just need to get back above this level to really start to see the uh, ETH start to outperform Bitcoin. And uh, last on the list, uh, I guess we'll take a look at uh, Mr. Chain Link. And we are getting that official test of the nine. If it is going to come back and pull back into some liquidity, this I would consider um, a decent buying opportunity. As long as we don't fall back into the range, there's no threat of uh, you know us coming back to this green box. But as soon as we lose the range high, which you could probably move this up slightly higher to uh, that level right there at about 1650. Well, then you'd expect Link to come back into the bottom half of the range. Sorry, guys, I'm not feeling extremely useful today as um, the market is just trudging its way onwards and upwards. And um, what else do I want to look at? Maybe the the Gaussian channel here. Do we want to take a look at that? If we start closing above 52,000, uh, I do think we'll reapproach the highs. And just kind of wrapping up my thoughts here, more to come, but the five day volatility play has not lifted off yet. It does have a chance on the weekly. It, it does have a chance. The five day is not initiated next, but when this five day volatility does increase, you'd expect, uh, you know, like a 40% move, 40% move, cross back to the upside. Where would that take us? Probably new all time highs, guys. 40% from where we're at today is going to get us up right at the high at 53 at uh, 69,000. So at least we've got a better chart upon us. And yeah, again, a five day closure above the middle wick is going to initiate that next target up for me somewhere around the 786. With that said, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. And I will be back tomorrow with some more technical analysis. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.